Hello again, this is BGFH. Welcome back to Illegally Cited, and I'm back for yet another iOS video. <clears throat> and this time we are going to continue our look at apps that use the camera, now that I can cover them. So let me fire up my AirPlay. And da -da 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 -da. Let's get my AirPlay going here real quick. And there we go. Like I said, I can't just start the video on the phone or the tablet, depending on what I'm using, because of the way the recording app seems to behave. So, <clears throat> with that said, I'm going to show you one of my favorite camera apps, aside from the CCTV ones, the magnifiers that I showed you in another video. So, the app I'm going to show you now, there are a few different choices, um, but I'm going to show you an OCR app today. So if you're familiar with programs for the computer like Kurzweil 1000, Kurzweil 3000, Open Book, DocuScan Plus, OmniPage, whatever, um, they basically can take printed material using a scanner or a camera and they can turn it into readable text. So the cool thing is, is we can actually do that with our phone as well. And now again, this is one that I probably would not recommend using a tablet for, especially until they get the flash thing figured out. I don't know why Apple hasn't decided to put one of those in yet, but I've, you know, I digress, I digress. So the app I wanna show you today is called Text Grabber. I'm going to go into my blindness folder, and my first one there is Text Grabber. Like I said, there are multiple apps that do. Hush. They there are multiple apps available that do cover or that will do OCR, but far and away, I found Text Grabber to be the quickest, the easiest, and some of the most accurate I've ever used for. OCR. I've tried several. You may have heard of things like Prismo, um, Text Detective, or a couple other ones that are floating around there that people have talked about. But I, like I said, Text Grabber for me is far and away my favorite. So the way I do this is I set it flat down on a piece of paper. I've got this uh, PlayStation Vita manual or quick start, whatever in the heck it is. We'll find out here in a minute. <clears throat> Put it flat down on the paper, and actually I'm going to unmute it so you can hear the camera, the camera noise when we do take a picture. I am going to raise it up about, oh, I don't know, 8, 10 inches. So, and I'm not looking. I'm, this is what I'm demonstrating. You can do this as a totally blind user. So I'm going to lift it up. You may have heard that. I don't know how good that came in. So, okay, so you saw the little blue kind of highlighter thing going, going down the page and recognizing what text was there. Now we can use voiceover and let's see how good it recognized. Oh boy. Okay, that didn't go very well. Um, let's go back. Let's try that one more time. Okay, I'm going to put it down. Let's try that. I think I cut off part of the page. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. 
Again, I'm just using standard voiceover commands. I can touch anywhere in this text to read it. I can use any voiceover command to read by character, word, line, read all, whatever. Um, I can do any of that stuff here. But I mean, notice from the time that I double tap the screen to take a picture on the viewfinder, you know, the, the nice thing is I don't have to use the button in the bottom middle of the screen on the camera interface to take a picture. It says when I tap anywhere on the actual picture part of the screen, that whole viewfinder can act as a capture button too. So you don't have to worry about being precise. So going from double tapping to, you know, taking the picture, um, to doing the OCR, the, the text recognition, to the time you're reading, like five seconds tops. It's gotten so fast. Um, and they, they keep making improvements. Um, when I first got it, I was pretty impressed with it. But it had a few issues, but I was really generally impressed. And about, I don't know, six months or better ago, they made a major update. I'm like, how can it get any better? Um, but it's, again, they've made minor updates since, and it just keeps getting better. So really impressed with this app, just how easy it is to use. I'm going to... Recognize text. Menu. Button. Let's see, go to the menu in the top right here. Share the rec Twitter. Button. I can tweet Send the recognized text if I want, but that's way too long. Facebook. I can Facebook it. Evernote. Button. I can dump it into Evernote Send if you have that app. Search with Google. I can search for Google, okay. Copy. Copy it to the clipboard, Copy paste it somewhere. I can email it to somebody. SMS. Button. SMS. Lingvo. Button. Lingvo. Button. What? Capital L I N G V O. I have no clue what Lingvo is, so I have Share the recognition results. no clue. So we don't Closes the menu. we don't want to do Closes any of those. That's kind of like your share button. On the bottom, history button. Here we have a history. We'll go to that shortly. Translate now we can translate. So it w in the App Store, this is actually called Text Grabber Plus Translator. So if you have, let's say, a brochure that maybe is in Spanish or another language, um, you can hopefully, you know, once you scan and recognize it, and then translate it into English. I haven't actually tried that, but. There you go. You can do it, and supposedly it works. And I would suspect that it works fairly well. Settings. Button. Settings. Let's go into settings real quick, just so settings. I can give you an overview. Recognition languages. English. All right. So recognition languages. Font size. Large. Font size. I changed that to large. You notice that when I did my OCR stuff there, and I was reading the text, that it came back as large. Web search. Google. Web search. Google. Save snapshot. Off. Save snapshot. I I think off. that may be on by default. I disable that because not only is it going to save, or not only will it save the captured text, but you can have it save a picture form of what you've captured. And I don't want to do that. Enable crop. Off. Enable crop. I also disable this. This is enabled by default. And so what happens is, is when you double tap on the viewfinder to take a picture, um, it will give you this extra step before doing the OCR so you can kind of adjust the borders of, you know, maybe there's a little chunk of the page that you don't want it to capture that got when, when, you, when you took the picture. Um, <clears throat> if you have some vision and are able to do that, it may be a thing that you want to play with a little bit, but I just for the sake of speed and efficiency, I just turn that off so that when I double tap, boom, it takes the picture and it jumps you right into the OCR mode. And like I said, within about five seconds, you're reading the text. ABBYY news, show on. At ABBY, that's the scanning engine that it uses. And I don't, probably don't need to have that on, but I just left it. Enable, on, flurry, have enable, on. Flurry, I have no idea what that is. I wonder if... Okay, that's apparently has something to do with capturing data. So, yeah, whatever that is. So, the main thing I think you will want to play with is maybe your text size. If you are low vision, you can adjust that. You know, do you want it small, medium, or large? Save snapshot. Save snapshot. I would recommend turning that off. 
and enable crop, turn that off too. So those are things that I would just kind of recommend, or at least that's my preferences. So we'll go done. Now we're back to the recognized text. And in the bottom, see, like I said, just, oh man, as a low vision user, look at this. The buttons themselves having the iOS 7 interface, History. it blends right into Don't the document the itself. Settings. They're Button. so light, especially that one on the bottom on. left History. is Button. so light. So now we have a history of things that I've captured. So those are my two scans of my PlayStation Vita thing. This was a business card that I had scanned a long time ago, a financial advisor dude. So I am going to go to the top of the screen here. I don't want to go to the camera. I'm going to go to edit. Now, what the way this works, I, I like the way this editing works. Um, what they've done is, so if, if I have, let's say I, I take a whole bunch of scans and then eventually I remember to clean it out. I can go to one of these, 16th, check it, 16th, this is the next one, PJVI. double tap to check it, Selected. and I can check as many as I want. Then on the bottom, a there's a delete, boom, gone. So I don't have to like delete, confirm, delete, delete, confirm, delete. I don't have to do that for every item. I, I really like... Oh, that is my email sound now that I have my phone unmuted. So, yes, Legend of Zelda, classic. But uh, anyway, um, I, I like the way they've implemented the editing, just so you can just really quickly bulk delete your scan history. Camera, Let's go back, actually, settings. settings. More, See, what does more do? More, edit. Uh, Rate this app, recommend to a friend. Gift it. Okay, so that just gives, that's kind of like a info and recommendation camera. section. So camera. let me go back to the camera up on the upper left. Um, I've got crop photo off. So I can toggle that. I can enable that. I for this again I leave my flashlight on um, because I generally find that it works nine times out of ten better if you have the flash on although if it doesn't you can always turn it off I'm gonna go ahead and mute this again so we don't get any more interruptions um, settings User manual, you get some tips and scanning, uh, scanning tips and just an uh, overview of how to use the app. History. There's my history again if I want to go through and edit the documents I've already scanned. There's my camera button, and originally that's what I thought you had to tap on. You had to double tap on to take a picture, but like I said, if I tap anywhere in the, where I'm looking at the actual viewfinder here, I can also use this as a camera button. So, especially as a voiceover user, it's really nice because you don't have to worry about accidentally bumping the wrong part of the screen and losing focus when you're trying to lift your phone off of the reading material and still take that picture. So, very nicely done there. I really love that. Album and album, album, this will take me... Photos. That will take me to my actual photo album the iOS photo album, which is kind of cool because let's say that you took a picture of something with another app or the main Apple camera app, you can, instead of scanning from the live image that this piece of paper that I have on my desk right now, if I already had a picture taken from something else, I could tell it to do OCR and try to pull the text out of an already taken picture. Um, so that's really great, especially let's say that somebody sends you a poster or a flyer or a memo that they maybe they emailed it to you as an attachment in a JPEG format. You could dump that into your camera roll and then pull it into TextGrabber and then be able to try to read it. So 
very cool kind of stuff. It's sort of like how OpenBook and Kurzweil and DocuScan Plus will try to scan inaccessible PDF files and other image-based content. So without getting into too much nerdy detail there, you also have that capability. So that is Text Grabber, or Text Grabber plus Translator, as they call it in the App Store. Typically, I believe the app sells for around four to five dollars. I think when I bought it, it was ten. Um, but even at ten dollars, it's way worth the money. I've seen the app go down, and they've have peri periodic sales. But if it's something you think you're going to use, don't even wait for the sales. I mean, just support these guys because they're constantly updating the app. They listen to feedback. Like I said, the interface and for scanning and reading and doing everything, and it works so well with VoiceOver. Um, if you're looking for a way to do portable OCR, I really can't recommend this app enough. I've tested several others, and this one just seems to work very, very well. Um, really, really liking it. Now, you, you know, and it's, you're using a camera, so, you know, you're not going to use it to read a textbook or a novel or a several page thing. You're going to use it to read, you know, maybe a menu, a handout, a flyer, maybe a couple page thing if you're in a meeting or a class, stuff like that, you know, that will, you know, that's short and you really just want to get the gist of because, you know, I've gotten it. A lot of times where I can get almost a perfect scan or almost a perfect read through the document, a large part of it depends on how well I took the picture um, or the lighting, but generally, you know, I get it pretty well. And if it's just for, like, if you're just wanting to get the gist of what a document says uh, when you're out somewhere or you're, maybe you're going through your mail, um, <clears throat> it's beautiful for that. If you're looking at, like you said, scanning a textbook or something where accuracy is very important and you're using it for like a job or a school project or something like that, you're probably going to want to go with more of a, you know, traditional um, computer program, OmniPage, DocuScan Plus. I really like DocuScan Plus. Um, Kurzweil and OpenBook, although, like I said, those are quite expensive they're still hovering right around a thousand bucks so um, they're nice programs but you know like I said there are cheaper options available now that do if you're just looking for scanning do a great job in their own right so but yeah I mean that pretty much wraps up a look at and oh I apologize I think I left my mouse pointer in the middle of the screen again I gotta remember when I'm doing these videos to not do that I remember seeing the iOS 7 video, I kind of had it in the middle too. So I got to try to remember to be better about that. So sorry about that. But that has been that has been a look at Text Grabber. It's available in the App Store now. Like I said, I don't think it costs more than five bucks or so at full price. So highly recommend it. Works great with or without voiceover. And I hope you guys found it useful.